How you doing, UK? It's King Nikosi Solomon, and you're watching Sporting Icon. Now, I've noticed over like the last year, maybe even two years, a lot of Americans will drop comments to me saying that, you know, they will support a certain fighter. Firstly, because they're American, but secondly, because they don't have other fighters to support because they want to be uh, biased when it comes to their own nationality. Of course, they want to support their own. But a lot of people say, but, you know, we support Wilder, not because we believe he's the best or and whatever else. And of course, we don't buy into the excuses and that, but because we don't have anybody else to support. And I understand that. I'm very biased when it comes to uh, British fighters, of course. But with America, you guys do have a lot of talent. And I don't think a lot of Americans realise that. Of course, some do. Some will keep heavy tabs right away from, from the amateurs and, and follow them right way through. But I do feel that in America, and it's not a harsh criticism, it's, it's not me being negative towards you at all. It's just that I don't think, as a whole, America support their fighters until they actually do something. In here in the UK, it's, it's opposite mentality, okay? We always like the underdog for some reason, okay? And we will support and help push and promote fighters as best we can, pretty much from professional debut. Again, going back to the amateurs and that as well in times. But we don't support them. We're not glory hunters. Of course, we do have some glory hunters. But for the most part, we're not. We will support people. We, we know who our fighters are. In America, you don't really know about them because maybe some bigger platforms don't talk about them as much. So I wanna give you my top 10 American heavyweights, who in my opinion are the top 10, and I'll give them to you in the order as well. Now there are gonna be some names that I haven't put into the top 10, and I'll explain those at the end of the uh, top 10, okay? Again, this is not designed for you to agree with my top 10, not at all, okay? It's pretty much for me, firstly, to put out some names that maybe you don't know about, but also, there are a lot of names under the radar who are not really being spoken about. They've got a bit of a padded resume. And the reason why a lot of fighters have padded, padded resumes is because people aren't talking about them. And if people aren't talking about them, their promotion isn't very high, which means they're not going to get paid very money. They can't afford the opponent. They can't pay the sanction fees to get themselves boosted into the rankings. Okay, that's the unfortunate world of boxing politics. Anyway, so we're going to start off with number 10, Dominic Brazil. Now, he's got three losses on his resume. And because he's got three losses on his resume, people will say he's trash, he's no good, and whatever else. But Don Brazil, he's actually a decent fighter. For me, he's gatekeeper level, okay? I do believe that three losses on his resume, Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder, and Otto Wallin. So those three losses, nothing wrong with that. I think Otto Wallin is proving to be better than what most people thought, okay? But Don Brazil... The one criticism that I really have about him is that he's a static target. Sure, he's durable. He can take a punch. He took a couple of Deontay Wilder's big punches and ultimately got finished because he's a static target. He's a big puncher in himself. He's actually a very good boxer, but for some reason, he doesn't always show that. In the heavyweight division, if you're a static target, you're going to get iced. And that's the simple truth of it. So Dominic Brazil, for me, is better than what most people give him credit for, but he's not going to do anything unless he starts moving his feet a little bit more, okay? Um, number nine, and this may surprise a few people, Trey Lipe Morrison, 17-0, 17 knockouts. Of course, he is the son of former World Heavyweight Champion Tommy Morrison. Of course, a lot of you will uh, know him if you like the uh, Rocky movies. He was in uh, Rocky V, Tommy the Machine Gun. Of course, he died um, a few years ago to uh, HIV-related illnesses. But with his son, Trey Morrison, He's a top-ranked fighter, and I believe, I might be wrong on this one, but I believe he's trained, or at least he was at some point, I don't know if he still is, trained by Freddie Roach, okay? But 17-0, 17 knockouts, okay, it's a good record. But he hasn't fought anybody that will make you go, oh, that was a real good win. But the couple of fights that I've seen him fight, of course, I haven't seen it, seen all 17 of them, but he looks like a very good fighter. He looks like he could actually go on and achieve what his dad achieved. Of course, his dad, he took quite a few losses, okay? But he had a very, very good career, okay? He has left a legacy. Now, him being the son of Tommy Morrison, okay, sons don't always emulate their fathers, but I think in this particular case, he could. But again, he's one of these fighters that people don't speak about too much. Therefore, he's not really going to get the big fights. And him being on a top-ranked show, of course, top-ranked, they have the likes of Tyson Fury and now F.A. Jagbar and a Ajit Kabiel and a couple of others. So, Trey Morrison is a little bit behind in the pecking order. But I think Trey Morrison, again, 
he needs to be looking at the other American heavyweights. Not necessarily in my top 10, but just American heavyweights in general. That's how you build your name. He needs to be a little bit more active on social media, do um, plenty of PR work as much as he possibly can. Then the big fights will happen. Then we'll see if he is going to be as good as what I think he can be. Or maybe he won't, okay? Maybe he won't. But for me right now, of what I've seen of him, he's my ninth American heavyweight. Number eight, Cassius Cheney. 20 and 0, 14 knockouts. Now, much like with uh, Morrison, profile wise, not many people know about him. And that's unfortunate. You're in, he's in a huge country of the United States of America where people love their heavyweights, but they don't know who Cassius Cheney is. For the most part, of course, some people will. But for me, uh, Cassius Cheney is actually a very, very good fighter. Very good fighter. But again, when you're 20 and 0, much like quite a few other fighters, like Wilder, he went like a 30 odd and 0 before people even knew who he was. Of course, I knew who he was, and a few other people did, but people weren't talking about him until he actually became world champion. And more importantly, when he became a rival of Anthony Joshua. That's when people started noticing Deontay Wilder. I don't want it to be the same with these other heavyweights. I want to see some of these American heavyweights to replicate what it is that some of the past greats have done and when you look at the past greats of the heavyweight division most of them are american but in this particular era they seem to be lacking and, and they're not lacking because they're not good enough they're lacking because they don't have the profile if you don't have the profile you don't get the fights but i think a cassius cheney is a kind of guy who can do something very very good but right now i can't rank him too high because i need him to have a couple of good wins on his resume but I'll, but what I've seen of him does look very, very good. Uh, number seven, Michael Polite Coffey. Now, Michael Coffey, 12 and 0, 9 by knockout. But again, people know a little bit about him because he does fight on PBC shows. But he's not in there with very good opposition. But I like his attitude because he will, in fact, be taking on Jared Washington next. Jared Washington is a gatekeeper. And if you're ever going to achieve anything in boxing in the heavyweight division, Jared Washington, especially if you're America, is the kind of guy you need to get past. So him defeating Jared Washington, which I think he will, I think that uh, Michael Coffey, then you're really going to start hearing his name because he's defeated a opponent from America that people have heard of. Okay, people have heard of Jared Washington because his four defeats, he's got knocked out all four times. But of course, he fought Deontay Wilder. Okay, he fought a Charles Martin and the fighters like that. So him defeating a Gerald Washington, that will tell us, is he really that good or not? For me, I think he is. I really do. And I do think in the next couple of years, he could actually be up there at the top, to be honest with you. He's got the potential to be so. Number six, Jared Anderson. Now, he's 9-0, nine, oh, 9 knockouts. Okay. Now, him being a top-ranked fighter is fine. There's nothing wrong with him being a top-ranked fighter. But him being 9-0, and oh, I think that, okay, his resume is okay. At 9-0, and oh, it's, it's perfectly acceptable. Okay, we can't criticise the level of opposition that he's for. But I think there's something about him that he could take on some of these other guys. I think that he could fight a, a Bermain Stavern. Ice him. I think that he could fight a Chris Ariola. Ice him. I really do. I really, really do. And I really, really rate Jared Anderson. I mean, I would like to put him a little bit higher based on what I believe he will do. But of course, I can't do that until he actually does it. I believe in him. I really think he's a very, very good fighter. But for now, he's number six on my top 10. Number five, Trevor Bryan. Now, I did think about putting him below Jared Anderson. I did honestly think about it. And I also did think about maybe putting him a step higher as well. And you'll see why. Um, when I give you my uh, number four. But Trevor Bryan, number five, I'm only doing that because he is WBA regular world heavyweight champion. He's America's only heavyweight champion. Is it a legitimate world title? Reluctantly, I have to say yes, it is. That's the one with the history, okay? But he's got something about him. He is a good fighter. But of course, when you're promoted by Don King, Don King, not exactly the most active in the boxing world anymore. Had Jared, uh, sorry, had uh, Trevor Bryan been a Don King fighter 20 years ago, I think most people would have probably heard of him. He would have had bigger and better fights by now. But he is found wanting at the races when it comes to better opposition. So we don't know how good Trevor Bryan is. 
We really don't know, and I'll say that, unfortunately. Okay, but either way, he's my number five. Number four is Charles Martin. Charles Martin, I think he's better than most people give him credit for. I think Charles Martin is put on some very good fights. I mean, when he fought Adam Kalanaki, that was a very, very good fight. Of course, he knocked out um, Jared Washington. Yes, okay, he lost to um, Adam Kalanaki on points. And, of course, he got stopped by Anthony Joshua. And that's what people remember him by. But he is actually better than what people give him credit for. That's why I was okay with him fighting Wilder. I was okay with that. When, of course, that was a big rumour. But, again, Charles Martin, if you look at him on the world stage... You wouldn't put him in at number four. You really wouldn't. Um, he would probably struggle to make a top 10, maybe in a 15, maybe. But in America, I think he's one of your best American heavyweights. I really do. But there again, if you put him in with a Jared Anderson or Michael Coffey or a Cassius Cheney or a Trey Morrison, how would he get on? I wouldn't be too confident of, of, of him getting those wins, to be honest with you. But right now... He has been fighting some of the higher guys, so he does need a bit of respect, number four. Now, number three, this is going to really stir up the bee's nest with a lot of people, Deontay Wilder. A lot of people have him as number one, obviously because he's former WBC World Heavyweight Champion, but his resume is very, very, very average. Even below average for the most part. And it's worrying we've had 44 fights and you're... All you can really look at is one good win, which is Luis Ortiz. One good person of a win. Of course, he fought Luis Ortiz twice, but he got battered from pillar to post in both of those. And as Anthony Joshua said a little while ago, which of course reaffirmed many of the things that I've said, you can't just have one punch when you're fighting the elite fighters out there in the world. If, you, if you're just bringing one gun to a fight, to a war, you're going to be found wanting. And that's all he does so far. Now, he could, of course, change my mind on this one. He really could. Not just by him beating Tyson Fury, okay? Tyson Fury ain't the best around the chin, okay? Okay, sure. Each time he's been um, knocked down, he has got back up again. But that ain't always going to be the case. But with Deontay Wilder, he needs to beat Tyson Fury. Not just by getting beaten up and then landing one big punch out of nowhere. He needs to go in there and put on a good display, win some rounds, show a bit of boxing ability. He's got a very good jab. He doesn't use it. His footwork can actually be pretty good. But so far, all he's done so far is relied on one big punch. And I do feel that while he may change in the first couple of rounds against Tyson Fury, we may see something a little bit different. As soon as Fury starts getting on top of him, if Fury starts getting on top of him, you're going to see Wilder revert to type. That's what you're going to see Wilder doing. And for me, I can't put nobody at the number one of any position if you're only bringing one gun to a, to a war. But Wilder, he could change my mind on this one. Uh, number two, I put Michael Hunter. I did think about putting him as number one, I have to be honest. Sure, he's got one loss on his resume to Alexander Usyk. No shame to that. Again, that was in the cruiserweight division. But as a heavyweight, he's beaten the likes of Martin Bacoli and a few others. A draw with Alexander Povetkin is very, very good. But Michael Hunter, I am disappointed with him because he didn't fight Filip Perkovic because he could legitimately beat Filip Perkovic. He could. But I don't think he believes in himself as much as maybe I believe in him. Okay, that's unfortunate. But I think that Michael Hunter, he could legitimately beat Deontay Wilder. He could legitimately beat a Charles Martin. In fact, I would heavily favour him over Charles Martin and Dominic Brazil and a few others. Again, some of the prospects I've just spoken about, I don't know. Because again, we're still waiting and we do have to give them a little bit more time. But Michael Hunter, not spoken about enough, in my opinion. He's not rated as... High as what I personally rate him by a lot of people. I think Michael Hunter is actually better than what a lot of people give him credit for. That I mean, his upcoming fight with Mike Wilson is absolute garbage. I will say that much. For me, I need to see him to continue what it was that he was doing. He was taking on good fighters. He was. But now, taking on Mike Wilson is, for me, absolutely terrible. There's no reason to fight him unless it is purely for a payday. Michael Hunter believes that he can beat any heavyweight out there. Cool. Go get your Mike Wilson fight out of the way and let's see it. Let's see it. That's why I didn't give him number one. Number one is Andy Ruiz Jr. It's debatable. Is he American? Is he Mexican? He represents Mexico. He wears the Mexican colours and all that kind of thing. But he is born and raised in America. So he is an American fighter. But Andy Ruiz Jr., former unified heavyweight world champion, the only man so far to defeat Anthony Joshua. That in itself deserves a lot of credit. 
sure he came found wanting in the rematch that is for sure and yes he does have a loss to joseph parker a lot of people feel that he beat joseph parker for the vacant wbo world heavyweight title in new zealand but i think andy Ruiz jr he could legitimately beat pretty much everybody that i've just mentioned he really could especially now he's under um, eddie Reynoso. but of course he can only do so much okay if he's not going to be turning up like he didn't with the um, Anthony Joshua rematch, for example, where he said that he didn't train. And for me, I think a lot of that was excuses. I think he did train. And we've seen the footage of him training. He was training, okay? But he does like his food. He does. And if he can be disciplined, I think that he could go on and dominate the heavyweight division for quite some time. Maybe become world heavyweight champion again. Maybe. Maybe. It's a tall order for him. That is for sure. And yeah, he didn't look great against Chris Ariola. He didn't look great. But he definitely won the fight, in my opinion. But I do need to see him take on a Lewis Ortiz, a Deontay Wilder, a Dillian White, a um, maybe a rematch with uh, Joseph Parker or go fight Huey Fury. Of course, that fight was um, signed pretty much um, a couple of years ago. But I need him to fight some of these guys now. Chris Ariola days gone. OK, let's move up. Let's not stay on the same level or go even lower. OK, so time will tell. But for me, I think Andrews Jr. so far is number one. But this list could change dramatically. It really could. I mean, the names such as Gerald Washington, um, not he, for me, he's not a top 10 fighter. Um, Nikosi Solomon, I mean, he's only had four fights. Of course, he lost his professional debut. Nothing wrong with losing your professional debut, by the way. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. But as an amateur, he was very, very good fighter. He was a matchroom fighter when uh, DAZN first launched with matchroom. But of course, um, as Eddie Hearn told me in, the, in the, one of the interviews I've done with him, that he actually released Nikosi Solomon because of a PD use, okay? Hopefully now he uh, cleans up his image and makes a bit of an attack on the heavyweight division. Again, you need to be focusing on those Americans around you. I'm not saying that uh, you, know, you need to be fighting in the top 10 right now, but he needs to get active. He needs to get regular. Uh, Stephen Shaw, again, very good fighter. I did actually think about putting him at number 10. I have to be honest. I did actually think about that. Uh, Chris Ariola, absolutely not. Absolutely not. He was a good fighter seven or eight years ago, but he's never been an elite fighter, has he? He was never in any... I don't think anybody truly believed he was ever going to become a world heavyweight champion, the first Mexican-American heavyweight world champion. But for me, Chris Ariola, he's past it now. I really do think he's past it. Um, again, which does counteract what it is that I was saying about Andrews Jr. How can I say that about Chris Ariola when I put Andrews Jr. as number one? It's not just because of that last performance. But again, I mean, some people may, may argue, and it is a bit of a saying that you're only as good as your last fight, that's for sure. Joey Dueco, I mean, um, I think that Joey Dueco is a, he's a gatekeeper, that's for sure. He's a decent puncher. He's actually a pretty good fighter, but he does get found wanting at the top, that's for sure. But Mace Tavern, do me an absolute favour. Christopher Lovejoy, 19 wins, 19 knockouts, very good. But you lost to Manuel Char. You can't be a top 10 heavyweight on anybody's list if you're losing to Manuel Char. In fact, he didn't look like he tried. I think Christopher Lovejoy has played the game. I really do. But if Christopher Lovejoy wants to continue, no point calling out the likes of Fabio Wardy. Call out American heavyweights. That's what you need to be doing. Uh, Big Baby Jared Miller, again, I didn't put him in there. While, of course, I think that he could actually be a top 10 American heavyweight. Maybe even in the top five. But I do question whether or not that some of those wins that he does have are legitimate wins. Was he under the influence of any kind of PEDs? That's my question to him. But if he can clean up his image, who knows, right? Anyway, that's my thoughts. You drop me yours. Click thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next video.